Ronnie, I'm Lady Nika. Um, and with last night's episode of uh, If Loving You Is Wrong. Yeah, I know this is my favorite one. And uh, shit, the hoe is disappointing me right now. I know I'm a little bit tardy to the party. My intentions was when I got up to, you know, I do my reviews. If I don't get them out that night, because... I ain't as good as Ashley. I, I, I child, uh, uh-uh. I, I can't do that shit sometimes. But my, my, my normal mo is, if I can get the video out to you guys that night, I'll do it. If not, you know it's coming that morning, okay? And since I have been, you know, working on my consistency, I try to live up to that. So in, in actuality, I'm not really late. I'm just, you know. It's later. It's coming to you guys later than what I had anticipated. It, it bringing it to you, okay. And the reading for that was when I was uh when I got up this morning, I I you know did, this was the look for the day. So I was straight with it because I'm on vacation and shit. This is what we do nothing, and um. I went to setting up, the, you know, setting up the lights and everything, getting ready to do the review for you guys and whatnot. And as I was doing it. As always, when I'm sitting up to sit and, and whatnot, so I'm, I'm usually listening to somebody's video. Now, most of the time, you know, I only watch a select few. But I happen to be down there on one of my faves channel, which is Thick Chick Vlogs. Um, and um, she was speaking on a, a situation that was going on with a fellow YouTuber and someone she's gotten to be rather close to, which is Goldmouth 100. I don't know if y'all watch her, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put her channel description down in the link below. I mean, in the description bar below. It'll be down there so y'all go check her out and stuff. But uh, in that video, basically, it just made me sad, y'all. It made me so sad. Now, y'all know I already been in my feelings for the last couple of, you know, really the last couple of months, but really over the last couple of days because I've had to speak on it. Uh, the situation with my little Mateo going through, you know, chemotherapy and all of that stuff like that behind her vocal papilloma that she has and how this child has been fighting at least three to four of the seven years she's been on this earth just to stay here. So that had me in my feelings, right? So as I'm holding on, you know, to God's unchanging hand, doing this, all this going on, I'm watching Thick Chick Vlogs, and she told us that Goldmouth 100 was diagnosed with, you know, a form of stomach cancer, and that she would be going to a rehabilitation, a cancer center, to receive her radiation. Now, for those of y'all that don't know me that well, just coming aboard, welcome. But y'all know that cancer shit really fucks with me bad. That, that fucks with me bad because not so long ago, you know, it was a YouTuber here who had that very same experience. Not the same form of cancer, but cancer's cancer, bitch. It don't matter. It ain't good on nobody. And in any form. So, it kind of put me in my feelings about that period because regardless of what has gone on between us over the last, the course of the last year, at one point in time, that person meant a whole lot to me. And even though they say a whole lot of disparaging and ugly things toward me, call me out my name and all that shit, it still don't take away from the fact that at one point in time, I really loved you. And when you went through your thing, I felt like I was going through it too. It hurt. You know, and I worried. I stayed up on the phone some nights with that person. You know, not so much because I can't sleep, but because just hearing you talk brought me some peace, knowing that you was okay. Now, things have transpired since then, and, and, and the relationship is not the same. But just because I don't fuck with you, don't mean I want you on the other side of eternity. You know what I'm saying? That's not who the hell I am. I want even the people that hate me the most. I want to see you survive. I want to see you thrive and do well. That's just how I'm designed. A lot of people tell me all the time, you be too nice. You don't go in. You don't do this and do that. Child, let me tell you something. I got one of the roughest mouths on YouTube. Y'all just ain't seen it yet. And a shady bitch, oh, bitch, I need to be over there on them Housewives of Atlanta and show them hoes how it's done. Because I'm a shady bitch. And I'm a bitch that can read you for filthy. In 2.2 seconds, it don't it don't take no time. So I don't do that kind of stuff because it's not who I am. You gotta push me 
Oh, uh, fuck with them eggs. Then you can see that side of me. But my point is, I don't want to see none of us down here on YouTube, not the not the YouTubers or the subscribers, ever to have to go through a life possibly altering or threatening situation. I have had incidences with several YouTubers that had issues, just like myself, you know what I'm saying? And even if we don't talk no more, my, my, my heart don't hate you. My heart don't, don't want to see nothing happen to your ass, you know what I'm saying? I used to tell one all the time, and she'll know who she is, because I'm sure she peeps over here every now and again. I used to tell a bitch all the time, take your fucking medication, bitch. It's the world is a whole lot softer and a lot kinder place with you on this side of reality opposed to being on the other side. You know what I'm saying? And I still mean that today. I don't fuck with her, but, you know, I don't want to see nothing happen. I, I wear it, and I keep her and the other YouTuber uplifted in prayers all the time because it don't matter what we've been through down here. At the end of the day, somebody love your ass. And sometimes I feel a little stupid because... I, I'm one of them motherfuckers, and I shouldn't, but that's just how I'm designed. Anyway, this lady is going through a six weeks span of chemotherapy that's taking her away from her home, uh, two mile, two hours away from her home, in hopes of trying to make sure that she remains on this side of creation, okay? And... Of course, that comes with some financial problems, and she has started a campaign that I'm going to leak down in there. I'm going to link Thick Chick's blog's video where she discusses this in detail, and at the end of Thick Chick's blog, you actually get to hear from Goldmouth 100 herself. I'm going to put that down there along with her campaign link and everything. And all we asking, because now I'm asking too. I know I asked y'all for Tay-Tay. I want I, look, hey, it's a lot of people watch you too. And if you can't give because everybody got their times where they go through financial tri trials and tribulations, if all you got is a prayer, don't you know a prayer would do wonders? So I'm put that stuff down there, and I hope that, you know, at the very least, if you can't donate to these folks, please pray for these people because they're in a fight for their life. And you never know when they could be you or one of your loved ones. Now, for the naysayers and people that's going to probably say some ugly shit, because every time something go on, folks get to want to say fucked up shit. Look, bitch, you ain't got to fucking donate. You ain't even got to pray. Pray. If your heart and mind ain't is first thing you think is all the YouTubers always want some or they always asking for something, bitch, you ask something from us when we come on these videos and it ain't easy to do. I'm here to tell you. Okay, so if you got that mindset, then just click on up a little bit because the video probably will start at 10 minutes. And uh, in 10 minutes in, you can go ahead and click that shit on up there or you can click off the video altogether. It really don't make me no difference because I'm going to be taken care of regardless. Okay, don't go to her channel. Or come over here thinking you're going to come for me because I'm, I'm speaking on behalf of someone. This campaign has absolutely nothing to do with me. But my coin's going toward it too. And the amount that I put in ain't nobody goddamn business. Okay? So both of the campaigns will receive a donation from me and my family because I care about what happened to people. I don't I ain't, I ain't here for no stunts and giggles and and all that shit. I'm here to make sure that people that need to help get their voices heard if by my channel then fine. I ain't got no problem. I'm just a vessel, okay? So, if you out if you want them type that I always got something negative to say, keep that shit to yourself because it's only going to get you cussed the fuck out and blocked the fuck off this channel. Don't do that. If you are if you an evil ass person, keep your evil ass thoughts to yourself and watch what happens. One day you too will need help. And I hope that you remember what you said and how you felt about these two campaigns that I am actively going to be a part of to help. Try to help these people. Hell, I want us all to live. Shit. Can't stand people like that, but I know they down here. I, I feel your spirit is heavy, bitch. Get off me. But that's all I had to say about that. That's why I'm late. Because I got in my fields and I had to pull myself up out of this shit. 
I don't like to get on camera upset and crying and shit no more because a lot of people take that as a sign of weakness and it ain't nothing weak about me, child, please, okay? So, the campaigns will be in the link to, uh, below as well as you uh, Gold Mouth channel as well as Thick Chick Blog's video that she did earlier today for her friend slash sister, okay? And to everybody that donate, thank you. Okay, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Don't nobody else say thank you. I'm going to say thank you because you ain't had to. And if you're praying, keep on praying. Because prayer, baby, it's, it's, it's power in that prayer, I'm telling you. You better get your song. Anyway, let's move on to last night's episode of If Loving You Is Wrong. Okay? Now, we start. Let me get these notes because I probably fucking forgot half of the shit that went on, child. My mind was gone when I seen that video today. Okay, so you might see me look down because I'm going to have to keep up. Now, we started this episode off with Kelly down at that police station. Remember, uh, Rick uh, told her she had to come down there and give her statement as to, you know, what she know about Ramsey or whatnot. Now, he asked a whole bunch of questions, like, you know, her involvement with Ramsey. And, and some of them questions got kind of personal. And she seen, you know, she was looking like, wait a minute now. But he explained to her that it was necessary to piece together what happened to Ramsey. So she was cool with that, okay? He then showed her a picture and asked if she could identify any of them. And she was able to identify his late mom, which is the reason why Ramsey came to town in the first, came to town in the first place. And his cousin, Grace. Remember her? She was one of them damn, uh, she was that lady that uh, Kelly wanted to kick her ass at the early part of the season. Because she thought that she was seeing Ramsey. But come to find out that that was her, his cousin. And she was an attorney helping him finalize the sale of that house to Lucian and Natalie, okay? He also tell after he gave her, uh, she gave him that. He, she gets ready to leave, and he gave her the paperwork for the restraining order that she wanted filed against Travis. Told her, look, take that down to your attorney, and y'all can handle that from there, okay? So she leaving and went right into Travis. And Kelly, girl, improve your damn acting, okay? Improve your acting, please. Because you in the popo station. What the fuck is you scared at this? Let me tell you something. If it ain't, if it's ever a time you can get your motherfucking shine on, it's at the popo station. Cause black or white or green, bitch, they ain't gonna let no no fool of fucker nigga trip for his rocks into that damn building. Child, she down there talking, and he asked her what she doing down there. She immediately started acting scared. I didn't tell him anything, looking just as guilty, and he looking at her like he wanna beat her ass right then. And he said, well, what did you do? What did you tell them? She all scared talking about she can't tell them nothing. And, child, it couldn't be me. Because, like I said, down at the Popo station is where you can get your shine on. I would have made a fucking scene. I ain't lying. Everybody in there would have known I felt some kind of way about him. And it had to be been fear. That sets your shit up, girl. Remember, you're going to get the restraining order. You're supposed to act that right then. Act like you in fear your goddamn life. So when y'all go down there to that judge, that judge going to know about this. Because it's going to be documented somewhere that y'all done act, you know, he came at you and you went off in that police station. But that that's neither here nor there. Then he started grabbing on it. And I'm like, okay, so we're going to act like we ain't at the police station. Y'all gonna act like y'all don't see this man getting aggressive with this woman. Couldn't have been down here, bitch. They would have been all over him like that, okay? Ooh. Then we hear this female that we don't know come up and say, don't worry about it, Travis. Um, and Kelly was looking at that bitch like, who, who this hoe? And she said, I'm the woman who lays in bed with him at night and reads your damn text messages to him talking about how bad you want him and how sexy he is. Kelly asked, well, is you the Carissa girl? Because remember, he went away and opened and engaged to somebody named Carissa. She said, no, nah, I ain't Carissa, but we do attend church, and we pray for you every single night, girl. Child, he walked away from her <laughs> and left her with, remember, my dad is a pastor of a large church. So I guess that was supposed to be a threat to her, okay? Child, he showed uh, Rick photos of shit that apparently he's saying Kelly done did, like slashes, ties, and whatnot, you know, property damage, and um, the so-called text messages. Child, he had a slew of alternative facts in his phone, and I thought for a minute Rick was buying this shit. I really did. I was just saying, now, Rick, bitch, now, come on now. You can't be that motherfucking slow. He told Rick Kelly been... Um, 
telling him via text, you know, to come to her. Her window is unlocked when her son go to sleep. Basically, turning her story around on her to make it seem like she setting it all up, but she trying to throw it off on him. He playing this shit real good on her ass, okay? I said, Kelly, girl, this one night of passion finna cause you a whole season of pain, girl. Mm, mm, mm. You thought he was childish and, 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 and something to play with, and he'll just take that one night stand you gave him and walk away with his tail tucked between his legs. But, uh, oh, you was a fool for thinking like that. I said, damn, this boy going through all this. Kelly must got some of that what you call comeback. Child. Because mm. Travis a fool for all of this. And if you don't know what good comeback is, ask somebody down in the panic. It's open. Okay. He say, uh, he met uh, Ramsey once in meeting because Rick asked him. Rick say, well, how how long was you with Kelly? He said, I was with her a while. Then she got, uh, she got crazy on him. He said she got that single black mom syndrome. She was all clingy, so much so that he had to leave the country to get away from her. And when he returned, she had bought a house and wanted him to marry her and telling her son that he is going to be her, uh, his dad. I said, now, nah, bitch, oh, he a lot. Rick said, so how many times did you did you say you saw Ramsey? He said, just once. And he asked, well, you ever been over to his home? And Travis said, no. And Rick said, well, how did you meet him? And he had to, he had to recoup. He said, I met him at Kelly's house because, you know, I still go over uh, and take the son to games and stuff because he look up to me and stuff. And I'm sitting here thinking, now, Rick, I know you, you know, you cute and everything. And sometimes they say, you know, them good looking people, they, they elevators don't go to the top floor. They usually a big mall sometimes and ain't nobody up in there shopping. Now, in order for him to get a little justice and take him anywhere, he got to deal with Kelly because justice underage. And if she crazy is all that he's saying, why would he subject himself to this shit? And Rick was when thinking Rick wasn't stupid, he caught that too. He started showing us that he caught that too. Rick said, Well, uh, where were you last night? And dude said he was down at the Buddha uh Bible study and the revival. I said, Now, child, I don't know how many of y'all go to church and stuff. But ain't no revival and Bible study going to happen on one night, honey, because you pray for the service, during the service, and after service. So by the time you do that in a two-hour span of time, how the hell did he have time? Child, lies. Lies his ass is telling, okay? Lies his ass is telling. So that fool say <coughs> he a giver. And he gave a scripture that was true, but it don't apply to Travis, though. You know what I'm saying? Child, you ain't refreshing nobody. Say ain't nobody refreshing you, okay? He asked Rick, could he pray for him? And the whole time he praying, Rick looking up at him like, nigga, please. And I will, too. Afterwards, he gonna ask him, did he feel it? The spirit of the devil. That had to be what he was talking about, the boy feeling. Anyway, he going to say, yeah, he felt that. And then Travis going to offer him to come down to the church house and see his daddy preach. And Rick said he going to come through. <laughs> yeah, bitch, come down there with them handcuffs, arrest his ass for murdering man and, and fucking stalking because that's what the fuck he done did. Now, enough of them. Let's go to uh, some more bull skit. Shout out to Random TV Reviews for that word. Um, Stevenson called it into the office where, and he asked him where Andrew is. Because he pulled a 911 records and it places Eddie at the scene, you know. So Eddie said he probably in the mouth of an alligator if my uncle uh, Peoples got hold to him. But I don't know, man. I don't know where the hell he is. And why you pulling that information up anyway? He said, because I'm covering for your ass. Remember, we in this together. Then, since Eddie on his Lucian, Lucian is a, a FBI shit, Steven said, I did some background, and um, barely, uh, Lucian barely made it out the academy. He shows him this old docked up uh, file that contains a picture of Ed, of Lucian with two dudes and his girl talking about uh, he, ain't, he don't think Lucian's no FBI. Now, I don't know what the fuck he is, but he ain't no FBI because he barely made it through the academy. Now, instead of Eddie taking that and that, that being it, now Eddie and I, he going to take the damn 
him file and say he going to give them people a call because, see, he needs some additional information on Lucian. Now, see, goddamn it, Stevens, what you done started. Now you got to get on the phone and call down there and tell Lucian that you gave Eddie this document ass uh, file on him. And Lucian was on board and said he'd take care of it. He ain't worried about it. But Lucian asked him, where, where in the hell is Pete? And that's when Stevens realized, I forgot to tell you, oh, he up there at the hospital. See, we found him. We found him at the parking lot of some restaurant trying to hail a cab. So we he back up there in the hospital on a different floor under an assumed name. That's where that Su Lang Ma came from. Uh, that's who he is, okay? Now, also down at the hospital at this scene, Joy is still worried about fun, but we ain't got no words yet. And that lady ain't finna call her daddy because she already know that that man gonna blame her because Joey, her son. He also warned, Jer you know, he had already warned Joey to stay away from fun, and he didn't. And now that girl done got hurt, that man ain't gonna do nothing but blame, blame, blame. So Kelly ain't trying, I mean, Natalie not trying to do that, okay? Now, Lucian, he go upstairs to see old Pete, and Pete say he don't feel safe. He needs some protection, okay? So, Lucian give him a gun and tell him to put it up somewhere, and he say, okay. He also said they let me out in a couple of days, you know? And now, y'all going on and stall out it. Do what you got to do with him. But when I see Ben, it's going to be some furniture moving. And Lucian saying, no, don't, don't, don't act on that revenge and shit because... Infernal, internal affairs is already aware, so they gonna take him down. So take all the asses down. Don't act out on how you feeling right now. He telling to chill on the revenge and put that gun up for a nurse or somebody to come in there and see it. And Pete said he got him. He put it down, you know, tucked it under and say he got him two pieces of steel in up in that bed. And Lucy was like, deuces, bitch. And I would have took his child. Ain't nobody want you, Pete. Now, Randall and Alex still up at the hospital, too. And the nurse come with this redhead chick that we find out is a, uh, is a, uh, employee for the Department of Children and Services, okay? She wanted to know how did this happen to this baby. And Randall say to Alex, go on, tell him about that crazy bitch that put my son in that lake. And um, the lady was like, the lady, what what the hell? You know, she basically wanted to know what's going on. The lady wanted to know who, who was the lady that Randall was referring to. And Alex said, uh, he told Alex, go on, on and tell this woman what's really good here, okay? She tried to sweeten it up, talking about my parents didn't want to see us together, so they kidnapped my son. Randall said, <clears throat> And they kidnapped me, had me in the box, beat me, and tried to hang me, bitch. He told it all. He said he gonna tell, he told Alex, go on, tell him you got two hours before court. Go on, tell him all that stuff. And he telling the damn lady, write that down, write down how hostile she is toward me. I'm gonna need all of that, cause see, I'm gonna walk out of here with my damn son. Child, I holler. They let it look like, what the fuck I done, uh, got assigned to deal with. And, she asked, like, okay, well, where's the parents now? And that crazy-ass grandma say, on slow roasting hell, bitch, I was through. Ooh, child, they made both their asses leave that hospital. I don't know who crazy is, but both of y'all, it has been touched, and it ain't by an angel, bitch. Get the hell up out of here, way around this baby. We don't know if y'all safe to be around this child. So, before they exit the building, Alice asked him, haven't you learned a lesson? He said, a lesson about what? Being held captive in a box? She said, and, uh, oh, he said, she, he said, being held in a captive by your dead ass parents. She said, now speaking of parents, how your mama doing? Baby, that shifted crazy to even more crazy. You hear me? He talking about what that mean, Alex? What that mean? Child, uh, now I'm going to tell you what was strange to me. We've been down to the hospital a couple hours because you know this Tyler Perry land, this soap opera land. We done been high here a couple hours. And you ain't never thought to seek out if your mama okay because you know she hurt. <laughs> you pretty much know that. So when you at the hospital, you ain't think to inquire about poor Miss Louise opposed to going back to that house like you did with all that blood and shit in, finding your phone and calling her phone number and it going to voicemail. Child, this shit ain't make no sense to me, but I hollered, okay? Now, he come out the house all frantic as Alex pulling up in the cab, and she closed lips. I don't know nothing about your mama. You figure that shit out for yourself, okay? 
And she's saying that Marcy coming out of Alex's house. So you know that put that bitch in a bad head spin. Baby, why is Alex on to know why Marcy, what Marcy doing in the house? She said, waiting on my man Brad with my car. <laughs> Alex go up in the house and Marcy right behind her talking about, we've been worrying about y'all all in prayer and tending to the kids in your absence, bitch. She tell Mar Mar she tell Marcy, girl, leave. It's time for you to go. Marcy say not till my man get here with my car. Alex say, uh, you can wait for uh you can wait your ass outside and I'll call you a cab. She say, no, nah, bitch. Uh uh. Look here, bitch. I ain't here for you today, okay? I ain't here for your shit today. You caused all this shit thinking that you wanted Randall, my husband. Now you got that motherfucker, okay? You can have his crazy ass. And I'ma have your good loving husband. Child Alice got the nerve to try to get physical with her. They went to tussling. Brad come up in there and broke that shit up. He said he ain't for the bullshit. He had a rough night and tell Marcy, let's go. And Marcy sitting up there smiling like, told you. Got your man, bitch. I all have done it. I like to see Marcy throw it in that whole face. Cause believe it or not, Alice is still on the second half of the season running around here like she ain't did nothing wrong. Bitch, you done did a lot wrong. You the reason all this stuff happened. Ugh. Now, down at Kelly job, her boss come tell her just the school and call. And I was confused. Why is the school call? Uh, Kelly ain't got no direct line or a uh, cell phone or that. Why is they had to call the main... Because don't Kelly work at the bank? I don't know. Anyway, child, she called and, and the school informed her that Justin didn't live, Justice left his little science project in the car. So Kelly asked the boss, can she, you know, go head on and leave to take it to him? And the boss said, yeah, because he boss going to need you later. That's why she's so cool with that shit. Now, when I heard that, I knew it. Beyond a shadow of a doubt. I said, bitch, gonna go out to that car and that motherfucking <laughs> Travis gonna be sitting up in the car. I ain't expecting to be in the back seat, but I knew he was gonna be in there and sure shit stank. There you go. He in the back seat of the damn car. And she acting all shitless and, and bad acting and all scared like a motherfucker. She ain't make she ain't utter mother or stutter. The bitch just was back there. I mean, just in the car, just scared, you know. And I'm like, child, that that I can't. And I think that's where the shit went off. If I left anything out, please feel free to put it down in the panty. The conversations always can continue down in that good old clean panty section down there, okay? Y'all, let me get the hell up off of here because I got green leaf to wash tonight and I think black ink crew too. Anyway, I'll be back, you know, hopefully earlier tomorrow <laughs> before, you know, it get late in the evening like it is now. Hopefully I'll be back before then. Child, remember the depth of your struggle will determine the height of your success. In the meantime, in between time, please remember to like this video. Comment below. I love a good conversation, honey. I love to talk to y'all. And, right, and share this video on your social media sites. And I will be back tomorrow with Black Ink and Green Leaf. And y'all have yourselves a wonderful remainder to y'all uh, evening. Child, they telling us here that... It's about to have a bad thunderstorm with golf size possible here. And tornadoes, honey. And a tornado watch. We on all that shit right now. So, y'all pray for us down here in Louisiana. We catch his, I'm telling you, we catch hell. <laughs> we might not get no snow, but bitch, we catch hell, okay? Anyway, I'll see you guys later. Uh, remember to check the description box. Description box. I can't talk worth a damn. Check the description box for the links to the campaigns. And if you can help these people, please help these people. And if you can't do nothing but jump down to your knees and say a prayer. You did good by me, bitch. You did good by me. Okay? And I'm going to see y'all ass tomorrow because I got to get the hell up out of here and go get me some <sighs> relax on. I told you I carry it. It be heavy, bitch. It be heavy. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Peace.